Hey guys, welcome back to my CCNA 200 301 course. Patrice is here and in this video we are going to review some key application layer protocols and their relative port numbers. Are you ready? Let's get started. As I mentioned in the previous videos, application layer is the layer with the most number of protocols. I divided the protocols that I want to talk about them in this video in different categories. And these categories are security, web browsing, mail transfer, file transfer, infrastructure, monitoring and logging, and finally, remote management. Let's review these one by one. Cryptographic is a massive concept, and it is out of the scope of our course. But you need to know that basically data can be transferred over the networks in two ways. The first approach is unencrypted or plain text, and the other one is encrypted. These names are obvious. Unencrypted means you send your data as it is. So if someone can sniff your data, you'll be on fire. For example, if you send your password unencrypted and someone can sniff it, they will have your password. So if we need to send sensitive data, it's better to encrypt them. And these two protocols, SSL, which stands for Secure Socket Layer, and TLS or Transport Layer Security, can help us to encrypt our data. The method that these two protocols use to encrypt the data is called asymmetric encryption. In asymmetric encryption, we got two keys, public and private. So if you got a server and a client, the public key as its name shows delivers to everyone. So the client will have the public key and the data will be encrypted with this public key and send over the network. And the private key is only available on the server and the data that is encrypted with this public certificate or public key is only decryptable with this private key, not with any other private keys. Web browsing has become one of our daily routines. We use it for doing our job, for entertaining and many other purposes. Some of you guys may use a web browser now for watching this video and all of you know that we use two protocols for web browsing, HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. So the difference between the two is HTTP sends out traffic in plain text mode and HTTPS does it in encrypted mode. And how? by engaging the two protocols that we have spoken about them in the previous slide. We can use HTTP and HTTPS for file transfer as well, but the main purpose is web browsing. HTTP uses port 80 of the TCP protocol and HTTPS uses port 443 of the TCP. The other aspect of our daily routine is sending and receiving emails. Basically, there are three protocols that are involved in the mail transfer process. SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, POP or Post Office Protocol, and the latest version for this protocol is version 3, so we say POP3, and IMAP or Internet Message Access Protocol, and the latest version for IMAP is version 4, so we say IMAP4. SMTP is the protocol that we use it to transfer emails between the mail servers. So for example, if we say this is Yahoo's mail server and this is Google's mail server and I want to send an email from my Gmail account to one of my friends who's got a Yahoo's email address, then email transfer between Google and Yahoo will be done through SMTP protocol. And SMTP by default uses port number 25 of TCP. And if we use encryption protocols to encrypt this conversation, the port will become port 587. P 
pop 3 and imap 4 are the protocols that we can use them to download emails from mail servers to our computers then when we use some email applications like outlook thunderbird or any other applications like these and pop uses port 110 and imap uses port 143 and again if we engage our encryption protocols pop port number will be changed to 995 and imap will be changed to 993 please keep in mind that these days many mail servers provide this download opportunity to mail clients through https as well so it all depends on your mail server configuration that you can use https imap or pop3 there are many protocols that can help us to do file transfer over the networks but we just want to talk about three of them first one is ftp or file transfer protocol next is tftp which stands for trivial file transfer protocol and the last one is scp or secure copy protocol ftp uses two tcp port numbers port 20 and port 21 port 20 is for data transfer and 21 is for control purposes basically ftp is a plain text protocol and if you want to make it secure you need to engage the security protocols that we have spoken about them and this makes it ftps and then the port number will become 990 tftp is the trivial version of ftp and it is much faster than ftp because it uses udp and port number 69 but keep in mind that tftp has got its own acknowledgement process through the fields in its own header so basically the data transfer through tftp is reliable and finally scp which has got a unix background SCP uses another protocol for data transfer and that protocol which we will talk about it in the next slide is called SSH or secure shell. SSH uses port 22 and so we say SCP also uses port 22 and since it uses an encrypted protocol SCP file transfer is secure. In TCP IP networks each host should have a unique IP address. And DHCP service or protocol can help us to assign this IP address and many other parameters automatically to the computers or hosts. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and it uses port 67 and 68 of UDP. The next crucial infrastructure service or protocol is called DNS, which stands for Domain Name System. As I said before, in the DHCP, in the TCP IP networks, all hosts should have a unique IP address. And we got a big TCP IP network, which is called Internet. And we got billions of hosts out there. How we can refer these billions of hosts with their IP addresses? It's not possible. We cannot memorize these unique IP addresses. So we use some names. For example, www.google.com. But still, if we want to reach Google's web server, we cannot use this name and we need the IP address to reach it. And now DNS will help us to resolve this name to this IP address. DNS is capable of doing the reverse as well. So it can resolve the IP addresses to names as well. And DNS uses port 53 of TCP and UDP both. The monitoring and the logging protocols that I want to talk about them are SNMP and Syslog. SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol and it helps us to actively monitor the networking device or any other host that can support SNMP. What information we can get from SNMP, it completely depends on the implementation of SNMP on the device, on the target device. 
So for example, what we can get is how much CPU does that device use? How much memory does it use? How much bandwidth is there on a specific interface? And many other parameters. SNMP uses port 161 UDP and also 162 UDP. Syslog, which stands for System Logging Protocol, is a protocol that can help us to generate logs on the devices and send them to a central location. If I want to be specific to Cisco devices, events and actions on a Cisco device will generate a syslog message. I will talk about the structure of the syslog message and how we can configure it later in next videos. But for now, just bear in mind that we got some devices here and actions and events on these devices will generate a syslog. And we can use syslog to send these logs to a central location, which is called a syslog server and have them all in the central location. Syslog uses port 514 of UDP. We can use Telnet and SSH to manage our Cisco devices remotely. Both of these two protocols do the same job and it is providing the console access to our networking devices from our computer. So we don't need to have a physical access to manage a Cisco device. And we can do it from our computer anywhere in a TCP IP network. The only difference between Telnet and SSH is Telnet is plain text, but SSH is a secure protocol. Telnet uses port TCP23 and SSH uses port TCP22, as we mentioned before. What is a console port and why do we need Telnet and SSH and how we can configure them on a Cisco device? Are the topics that we will talk about them later in next videos. Please bear in mind that the port numbers that I've talked about them so far are the default port numbers, but you can change them. The only thing is if you change the default port numbers, you need to notify the clients who uses that service. Otherwise, they won't be able to access it. At the end of this video, I want to encourage you to install a packet analyzer on your computer. Maybe the most famous one is Wireshark. Wireshark is free and you can download it from Wireshark website. This application or similar ones can help you to visualize whatever I've talked about them in the previous videos. You see different information in these packet captures. There are some sample packet captures in the Wireshark website as well, like this one I have downloaded it. You can see what's going on inside a network packet. What's going on in layer 2, what's going on in layer 3, what's going on in layer 4, what's going on in layer 5 or layer 7, application layer. You can visualize the actually the connection establishment and connection termination process that I talked about it. For example, if you say this is a CNAC process. So you should have some information here in the flags. So if you open the flag one, you'll see that the acknowledgement and the scene flags have been set, which means they are one, but you see the rest of them are zero and many other information. Wireshark is big enough to have some courses specific to it. So you can search for Wireshark courses and learn how you can work with this very good application. All right, this was our today's video. I wish you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please do not forget to subscribe this channel. Put your comments down below and like the video. Thanks for watching.